I always had an interest in electronics and wireless communication. Actually, it comes from my sort of upbringing, I suppose. My dad is an engineer. He uh, got me involved in hobby radio, and I grew up around soldering irons, and my dad's got a big workbench that always inspired me. I studied these topics into my A-levels and then carried on into university. And at the time, uh, when I was an undergraduate, we were in the telecoms bubble. Um, all the, the, the salaries were for the telecoms jobs. To myself and all of my sort of classmates, we all wanted to work in wireless comms. 5G has this, the potential to be transformative uh, and it can uh, create new applications around ultra low latency, around the Internet of Things. And we can see a future where it's not just mobile phones that are connecting to, to, to base stations and to 5G networks, but it's also drones and it's, it's wearable items and it's vehicles. It's, all, it's everything will be connected. Uh, the limitation of 4G was still that it was essentially designed for uh, people talking, sending data, uh, but it had its limitations in terms of transmission speeds and in terms of equipment, uh, various other aspects which uh, the researchers realized that ultimately what we really need is more like the Swiss army knife of mobile communications. And so you've got uh, this um, multitude of devices and a multitude of um, services that you can connect to, but also different applications. Which is capable of fueling large computers, laptops, tablets, uh, the small smartphones and the IoT devices, the minuscule, even potentially implantable devices. So I sort of cast my mind back when uh, I first uh, encountered Prof Monder and uh, he, he distinguished himself amongst all the undergraduates because his marks were all bouncing around 100% marks. And ultimately, uh, that took not only talent, but also an amalgam of talent with uh, determination and stamina. So the, the genesis of the startup was a particular piece of research that uh, myself and my PhD students were doing around turbo codes, which is a type of error correction. And we, we recognised a problem around the, the state of the art in turbo coding um, was that they, they didn't uh, achieve the sort of throughputs and latencies that were being demanded by 5G. So, so we were working on, on turbo codes and we found a way of uh, changing the, the sort of accepted wisdom um, and breaking the rules in order to build a turbo, turbo decoder uh, that could achieve the throughputs and latencies uh, that 5G was targeting. Uh, so he had the, that sort of that ability, that vision, that that breadth of understanding and knowledge, and his own network, and was respected in his academic community. Prof. Monder came up with the idea of the fully parallel turbo decoder, and so that is when uh, really the genesis of Accelercom started. He patented this clever technology, and uh, ultimately. They went from there, developing a whole suite of um, sophisticated error correction codecs for these very challenging applications. The reasons why we thought our technology had the potential to commercialize was simply the fact that we managed to come up with a technology that can run 10 times faster than the current, or the at the time, than 4G technology. Um, people will throw numbers of hundreds of billions or a trillion dollar market at this when they talk about anything from wireless communications, which is mobile phones, satellites, cars, Internet of Things. Um, they'll, they'll throw numbers at that from hundreds of billions to a trillion. So we had started the company uh, in 2016 uh, and it was later that year when the standardisation of 5G uh, really, really started to take off. At that time when I got involved with the company, the standardisation for 5G had not yet adopted a particular decoding technology. Uh, and our research had been around turbo codes, the, the patent that we had, the inception of the company were all based on turbo codes, which is a technology that had been used in 3G and 4G before it. So our expectation was that it would be continued to be used for 5G. And for some reason, I got, I got pushed to the front to become the spokesperson for the turbo codes sort of group of companies. 
Uh, and there were big names amongst those companies. Ericsson was, was a supporter of TurboCode. Orange held many of the patents behind TurboCode. NEC and Sony, there were, there were all these big name companies um, interested in TurboCode. And it, was, it fell on my shoulders to sort of represent that point of view. Um, there were other big companies supporting LDPC like Intel and Qualcomm and Nokia, Samsung supporting LDPC, Huawei were the big proponents of, of polar codes. So it was a really big kind of debate. When we spun out from the university, we had the technology, uh, we had the vision, we, had, we thought the market for that technology because 5G was happening and we we're transitioning from 4G to 5G. There were so many factors in the industry that you cannot control. And we were very much hoping that the turbo codes, which was the main technology that Accelericom started off with, would be adopted for 5G. Ultimately, the direction that the standards went, though, was of LDPC and Polar for 5G. Suddenly there's this kind of, oh, uh, what are we going to do about this kind of moment? So this created a big challenge for us because we'd built a company on the basis of turbo codes that, that weren't in 5G or they were marginal. They were, they were still adopted for backwards compatibility with 4G. One of the biggest challenges you face in, in venture isn't just about tech. You can have better technology and better ways of doing things. That's, but that's, a, that's half the story, perhaps not even half the story. The, the reality is, well, will people adopt that? You know, you take Concord as an example. Yes, it was quicker. Nobody cared in the end, you know, the economics of it didn't quite work. The cost of it was too high for the benefit. There's a million different technologies that get released and just don't go anywhere. But actually, in the end, it turned out to be much better because uh, by adoption of polar codes and LDPC, it actually opened up a much wider market than the original turbo codes would have had. So in a way, yes, it was a challenge, but then um, through ingenuity of Rob and Tahai, you know, we managed to kind of um, adapt and, uh, and change the focus of the company. I never considered giving up. We had taken investment, we had used time from people who, who had supported us and engaged with us. And for me, giving up was never an option. I, I felt like I had to make good on the promises I'd made uh, to our investors, to our, to our supporters, um, to those who had joined the team. Every startup has, has these difficulties. I, I do not know of a startup that just goes perfectly well. Over the, the six years since we've got started, the company has grown enormously. At the start, in the early days, a lot of the expertise in the company was inside my head. Today, only a small fraction of the expertise that's, that the company has belongs to, <laughs> belongs to me. I've got no doubt it will continue to grow. You know, the business will have many choices to make over the next five years. It's at a real inflection point. They've delivered already. They've got two major, you know, globally known companies on their boot. Their revenue's up 90%. You know, they're on a strong growth trajectory. With that growth has come greater and greater diversity of different customers. The products that we have uh, has grown and grown. We now have increased the scope of what we do from being just the error correction components to being all of the, the physical layer signal processing components for 5G. I was extremely proud when I when I read it was I think it was a year ago that they were uh, recognized as one of the top hundred startups in semiconductor but the nature of what they do just means it'll be continuous growth and continuous improvement and a continuously expanding product we're working on interfaces to allow our customers to access that technology without having to be uh, hardware experts themselves uh, we're also building out complete solutions so that from us a customer can take all of the IP they need to build uh, the physical layer of a 5G base station. It could be a unicorn. I don't think that's unreasonable in a five-year time frame. So this broadening of scope has created bigger and bigger opportunities for us as a company. We can access more and more parts of the market with bigger and bigger companies um, and it's all been uh, very overwhelming for me. I knew these guys would make it.